All right, next in line, we have our experimental microphones. I'm gonna start with a microphone that I generally use nine times out of 10, and in most cases, I ended up even using it when I mix. This microphone is called the Trash Microphone. If you watched my previous tutorial on the arts of recording drums, um, we've used, actually have used uh, an SM57, and the SM57 is actually pointing towards the wall, which is right behind the two large tube microphones. Now, what I'm doing with this SM57, the concept is pretty easy. I want to record the nasty, the nasty is actually reflection out of the wall. So the null point of the SM57 is toward my drum kit. So I'm avoiding to record any direct signal from the actual drum kit. And what I want to do is kind of like to hyper compress and squash the life out of the signal that gets recorded from the, the 57, which by default, again, is a great microphone, especially for snare drum, but uh, the mid rangey and um, the quality of the microphone makes it such that I will take all that reflection that comes from the wall and allow me to have a very punchy mid rangey sound of the room. Now the concept starts uh, back then when engineers used to have one of these utility microphones in the center of the room when people used to be playing together in the same room. And pretty much in order to communicate from the live room to the control room, they used to have this utility microphone and having this microphone passing through a compressor such as an 1176 with all buttons in, in, in a way that the microphone will or could um, enunciate exactly what the musicians were trying to communicate to the engineer. Now what happened is that in most cases this, this microphone would have been recorded and the engineers would find that even that the placement would be in the most odd and absurd placement of all, this microphone when blended in correctly with the rest of the kit would add an extremely interesting grit and size and trashiness and bombasticness to the overall sound of the drum kit. And therefore, this technique is commonly used by many engineers, the, some of them call it the stunt mic, and each one of us use it and position the microphone in many different ways. What I did with this microphone was pointing the SM57 approximately 24 feet away from the kit, pointing right at the wall, the lower wall we see right now in the video. And um, the 57 is passing through, if I remember cor like correctly, through my SSL channel. I have removed a little bit of the highs and then I had the 57 feeding a distressor in nuke mode. So I pretty much squashed the life out of the leaving sound of this drum kit. So without me saying even more, I'm gonna go ahead and let you hear what this microphone sounds like. So remember, we're only listening to the microphone that I call the trash microphone, which I generally use in combination with the overall kit. It's a sort of like parallel compression or hyper distortion of the overall drum kit. Uh, by default, it's gonna sound very trashy. I actually love it, but perhaps the sound might be kind of hard to fit in, you know, uh, the broader specs of music genre. Uh, but again, used with, you know, cautiousness it could create a very interesting sounds out of the, the close microphones. All right, I'm gonna let you hear to the trash microphone. To do so, let me pick, let's say our overhead section. So right now what you're hearing, it's a microphone which is positioned all the way back, uh, facing, uh, actually the back of the microphone is facing the drum kit. All right, this is the trash microphone. You hear the explosiveness and how much now the, the overall room sounds a little bit more, uh, I don't know, grainier. Like we don't have that clarity of the room. We just have this hyper compressed signal summed into mono and we have only the actual reflection of the drum kit against the, the bare wall. I'm gonna let you hear in context with a little bit of the proximity microphones. So I'm gonna let you hear this microphone in context with the um, kick drum and the snare drum. So listen to the difference. Of course, there's gonna be a little bit of delay in which this microphone has received the, um, the, the signals in. So we're gonna hear a little bit of phase shifting, which if we want, we could address it by nudging a little bit the signal within Pro Tools, or what I tend to do it is leave it the way it is. 
that's how it's supposed to sound and just figured out the correct blend in order to add a little bit depth and grist and size to the overall drum kit without having people to hear that we actually blend in a hyper compressed version of the overall kit. All right, this is my kick and snare and then I will add in the trash microphone. The explosiveness now this microphone is generally used uh, as, a, as a blend in as a parallel processing again I'm using something that I have processed in the way in while I was producing this track and now I can decide the amount of you know trash sound or hyper compressed sound uh, let's name it more properly to add in in order to uh, add a little bit more weight uh, and width to the to the overall drum kit so what I'll do right now is to open up my overhead left and right my Royer so we have kick in snare top overheads and then I will blend in a little bit the trash microphone Let's see if I can move here so you can see me blending in the signal and let's listen You hear how big all of a sudden the drum kit sounds. I mean, this microphone itself uh, might be used to have the kit to, I would say to gain a little bit more tone. You know, we're starting to move away from the standard drum kit sounds and blending this specific microphone in with the overall sound of the drums, we're starting to obtain a completely different timbre, which might work or sometimes not work upon what type of production we're having. What I'll do right now is unmute everything and then I will put my trash microphone at Unity, keep it muted, which is over here. And what you're gonna be hearing is the overall drum kit sound we have achieved so far, minus the trash microphone, which I will unmute it throughout the overall um, development of the, of the recording to let you hear how much weight does this microphone add. I'm going to move towards another section, our classic tom fill. Before without the trash microphone and then with.
you hear the size that we are gaining by adding in only the trash microphone and again this microphone it's a 57 maybe um, 95 dollars worth of an investment and yet within the position and the type of compression you are applied to it we're capable of kind of like making our drum kit sounds enormous so imagine in a scenario where you only have three microphones where you have a kick microphone snare microphone and then perhaps a microphone that you can trash a little bit right now i'm gonna let you hear how by only adding the trash microphone and the storting and actually having the microphone picking up only the reflection out of the wall we can recreate uh, an environment around our drum kit and making it sound actually big so only kick and snare and then again i will add the trash microphone i will move toward another section let's say over here And this was our trash microphone. In addition to it, if you watched the previous tutorial, again on the arts of recording drums, I've used two extra sets of TLM-103, which are condenser large diaphragm microphones, and they have an extremely fast response. The way I've used them, I don't know if you can tell, let's see if I move around. So if you can see here, right on the left, and we have another one on the right of the drummer, we have two other sets of gobos. So behind these gobos, I have positioned these two TLM-103, but facing parallel to the ground. So what I'm aiming to do is, again, uh, using the rejection pattern, which is right behind the gobos, in order to tame down the, um, the harshness of the cymbals. And what I wanted to do is just only pick up whatever reflection comes out of the, the, the ground floor. Again, this is notoriously something that not a lot of people do uh, I felt like experimenting so why not and the reason why I use this to other microphone is that right now we don't only have a mono trash room but we have two microphones that if we want we can compress them kind of like to bring up the stereo lo-fi and low-end definition of our drum kit I'm gonna let you hear only these two microphones by themselves All right. Again, being in a complete uh, you know space between one to another having even the gobos between them we are obtaining an extremely uh, carved out uh, low-end sound that we could help in order to enhance the the not only the the length but especially the the weight of our drum kit and again we have the stereo and the right reflection which will work really well in conjunction with our trash microphone. So I'm gonna let you hear the snare top kick in, plus then I will add in the two um, experimenter floor room microphone, that's how I call them. Again, I'm using them to kind of like bring up a little bit more uh, the room, but in a type of stereo scenario, which is completely almost beyond our stereo panorama. Considering where we have positioned them and the way we have panned them, now we have the drum kit, which is right in the center, and these two microphones, which are at the completely opposite side behind the gobos. Now, what I would do 
and I will just hide our drummer jig for a second to show you what actually or how I would use these two microphones. So first of all, what I would do is to route them through an aux, which I'm going to call floor room aux, stereo aux, okay. So now these two microphones are feeding my aux over here, which I'm going to solo safe on this aux. I will add my favorite compressor of all time, a 33609 by Universal Audio, which emulates almost spot on the actual sound of the real unit. Unfortunately, in the studio I only have one 33609, so I couldn't record more than two tracks to it. So we recorded the overheads left and right, so right now I have to use a plugin version. That's the benefit of using plugins. All right, so uh, Universal Audio. All right, so I'm gonna mess around a little bit. I, for now, wanna link the two left and right sides, but then I will unlink them. I will unlink them primarily because I don't want the right side of the compressor to start compressing uh, when something happened on the left side of the compressor. So I want the compressor still to maintain a very broad and focused stereo spread. And then I want the two section to work simultaneously, but if something happened on the right side of it, I don't want the left side of it to react to that. So I'm going to start setting up a recovery time of 100. Uh, let's see, 3 to 1 compression. And what I'm aiming to kind of like obtain out of this compressor is approximately 4 dB of gain reduction over here. All right, so listen carefully what this compressor is doing. By default, again, we're using a VCA compressor, which is really fast, especially in transient material. What I'm doing with an EVE, especially given the, 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 that this compressor has a particular circuitry, which brings up a little bit more and enhance a little bit more the low end of the signal, what I'm doing with it is nonetheless trying to bring up a little bit more the low end and the size of the room. So I'm gonna let you hear before uh, with the compressor bypassed and then I will engage the compressor. Let's see if we can pull up Jake as well. All right, so compressor bypassed. On. So again, this compressor gets used a little bit more in order to bring uh, the whole kit together. Especially on the snare drum, do you hear the length and the size that we're gaining from adding this compressor to this to this particular room microphones? So again, I'm using this primarily to and reach a little bit more the size, especially of the kick drum and of the snare drum. And that's why this compressor is doing a magnificent job in allowing me to do so. So what I'll do is again to blend this signal in with my kick and snare. All right, they're already there. So what I'll do is to blend this in with the closed microphones.
I mean, though we don't have a clear, um, you know, um, stereo spread of the kit in an order uh, that would be similar to the other microphones that we use, uh, for instance, to capture our close rooms, these two microphones imprint a wider depth to the kit. And again, that's why I'm using it. Uh, if you're curious on where exactly they've been positioned, I encourage you to watch the previous tutorial called The Arts of Recording Drums, where I explain with further details and actually have a picture and a video where the microphone was positioned. So what I'll do right now is to add all these microphones in at the level that I've chosen uh, based on the, again, uh, closed microphones. And the only microphones that I'm muting are the midside, the XY, and the Glyn Jones. So right now, we should have a pretty good balance of the overall drum kit. So what I'm gonna do right now is to let you hear um, the overall drum kit. So I'm going to unmute everything and let you hear before only kick and snare by themselves. And then I will unsolo everything to truly let you hear the powerful um, effect that this microphone techniques have on the overall sound of the kit. So I'm gonna start with only kick and snare. Um, and then I will unsolo them to let you hear all the microphones we've used. Now, the only one we're not going to be using or listening in the context are the XY, the Glenn Jones techniques, and the mid sides. Changing shot. I'm gonna show you the tom fill. Actually, let's start from snare and hat. And there you have it. So now we have properly built the sound of a drum kit by utilizing different combination of closed microphones versus ambiences versus room versus experimental room, trash microphone, and so on. And now I hope you have a greater understanding how on how properly to use all those microphone in conjunctions. Again, it's it's primarily up to the style of the song that you should choose wisely what type of microphone to use what type of position or what type of microphone techniques to use. And then it's up to the way you listen to things. It's the only thing you should trust and should rely. It's your taste. And especially the taste that should guide you to choose the right microphone techniques. Um, I'm gonna move towards another tutorial, our last one, where I'm gonna only let you hear the overall kit. I'm not gonna be talking. I'm gonna just start mix matching different techniques, subtracting different microphones, adding different microphones in order for you to let you enjoy the beauty of a full range mic drum kit. I will see you in the next tutorial. Ciao.